Um, a cancer diagnosis and embarking on chemotherapy are stressful events for all patients, and we know that clear communication and education helps reassure patients to assist delivery of best outcomes. And I'll be presenting on an implementation project from the Crown Princess Mary Cancer Center. Sorry, that's the wrong way. Um, a number of factors seeded the genesis of this project. Pharmacists and nurses at our cancer daycare had noticed that patients from CALD backgrounds requiring interpreter services were not well flagged. Communication difficulties were often first detected at their initial chemotherapy treatment appointment. Even in situations where we did have an interpreter booked for that first chemotherapy session, it was only arranged at that initial session and we didn't have an interpreter for the subsequent cycles. Our weekly group education for new patients was done in English and there were limited multilingual patient education resources on chemotherapy. Bilingual staff or family were commonly relied upon to assist with communication. And although they knew it was against Department of Health policy, um, staff felt obligated to assist these patients as they struggled to navigate their way through clinics and appointments and tests. We pursued this project because of its relevance to local demographics. That statistic for, for the um, WSLHD from the 2011 census were double New South Wales averages for the percentage of residents that are overseas born and those that have a preferred language other than English. Additionally, CALD patients remain a priority cancer population for the reasons listed. Sorry. This project aimed to improve the identification of CALD patients by 50% within six months and to implement targeted education and communication support for them during chemotherapy. We established a multidisciplinary project team and flowcharted existing processes to identify gaps and variations, and we then explored causes and effects of these. Consensus-weighted multi-voting prioritized the following as needing improvement. Early identification of these patients, effective use of interpreter services, and development of multilingual communication and education resources. The Plan Do Study Act approach was applied to these. Uh, an audit of our chemotherapy booking form, which is still a paper-based form, confirmed low identification of CAL patients in need, in need of interpreter support. Um, we thought it was not very feasible to rely on time-poor doctors to improve documentation on this paper-based referral form, so we explored alternatives. With technical support, we developed an interface data field in our electronic scheduler that prompted clerical staff to answer yes or no to a question whether an interpreter was required for patients whose PIMS upload had um, documented a preferred language other than English. If a yes is entered into this data field, all clinic lists display preferred language next to the patient's entry and alert that an interpreter booking is needed. And this has enabled 100% alert and identification of CAL patients. Multidisciplinary staff uh, at our center were surveyed on their experiences communicating with CAL patients. And the responses we got back highlighted that there was common use of bilingual staff or family to step in as interpreters. There was inconsistent use of interpreters at chemotherapy sessions. And we had mixed responses to staff self-assessment of their satisfaction and success communicating with these patients. We reviewed interpreter statistics at our center and identified a 11 to 19 percent cancellation or no show rate, which often related to scheduling issues around the clinician, the patient, and the interpreter being available at the same time. Um, we ran four practical education sessions for our staff, and these covered things like communication tips when you're using an interpreter, reminded people about ministry policy around communicating with CAL patients, and they also um, had a session from the multicultural health exploring cultural sensitivities around cancer. A standardized procedure for pharmacist education of CAL patients via interpreters was developed and implemented. And we have seen a marked improvement in scheduling of interpreters with the cancellation rate dropping down to 1.5% and a higher rate uh, uptake of phone interpreter services. Uh, we've had recently available multilingual patient uh, information in EverQ, which has been much appreciated. But in 2013, when we first began this project, there were limited resources. We have developed a multilingual communication tool specific for chemotherapy, and this will be designed in a flip chart format with English on one side for the um, staff to follow 
and the translated instructions on the other side. Uh, the resource provides common instructions, advice and explanations, and assists communications with patients on their treatment experience via tick box sort of questions and answers. Culturally appropriate pictures and simple language have been used. The resource was de developed in English with consumer feedback and we also had cultural input from the Multicultural uh, Health Service. It will be translated into 10 common written languages that are encountered in our LHD. Um, so in conclusion, local demographics necessitated service improvement for this patient group and our project has improved early identification of CAL patients and enabled interpreter resources to be used more effectively and efficiently through structured processes. Implementation of targeted education and communication support for CAL patients undergoing chemotherapy will assist staff to assess and manage side effects, reinforce education and monitor compliance. These are my references and thank you for your time.